E equals MC squared is probably the world's most famous equation. And here's a nice way to prove it needing only a radioactive box and a rocket. Let's say you have this box of mass M at rest in some inertial reference frame. You decide to record your observations from this rest frame of the box and so you note down its velocity to be zero. After some time, the box emits a burst of radiation having uniform intensity in all directions. Obviously, this doesn't change the momentum of the box and it's still at rest. However, you do record a decrease in the total energy of the box equal to E, that's the energy of the radiation emitted. Okay, all of that is pretty cool, but let's re-watch this event from the perspective of someone cruising past us in a rocket with uniform velocity V. Inside that rocket is our boy Albert Einstein. Now from the rest frame of Einstein, it's the box that moves away from him with velocity V, and he records its kinetic energy to be one half of mv squared. Now when the box emits a burst of radiation, Einstein will also record a decrease in the total energy of the box equal to the energy of the radiation emitted. But the problem is, this energy is not the same one that you calculated or detected. The reason for this is that from Einstein's perspective, the source of radiation is receding away from him. So he detects a lesser frequency and hence energy of radiation. Here the relativistic Doppler effect applies and the energy detected by Einstein is decreased by a factor of 1 minus v squared by 2 c squared, the negative sign meaning that the source of radiation is moving away from him. We see that this factor of 1 minus v squared by 2 c squared is always less than 1, so the energy detected by Einstein is less than the value that you recorded. So here's a quick recap. Both you and Einstein observe these events from inertial frames of reference. You both agree that the total energy of the box has decreased as a result of emitting that burst of radiation. But the values of this decrease in energy differ. You record a value of E, whereas Einstein records a lesser value of E times 1 minus V squared by 2 C squared. But this discrepancy does not make any sense because the box here is a closed system, meaning that there are no external forces acting on it. So there shouldn't be any discrepancy in measuring changes in total energy. Thankfully, you have the great man Einstein by your side, and he proposes that the difference in recorded energy changes is due to a loss of the box's kinetic energy in his frame. In other words, the loss in energy that you record equals the loss in energy that Einstein records plus some loss of the box's kinetic energy. Now, if we denote the kinetic energy of the box before it emits the burst of radiation as Ke1 and the kinetic energy after emitting that burst to be Ke2, and we write these kinetic energies in terms of different values for the velocity of the box, that would make no sense because, again, we have a closed system, so there are no external forces to cause any changes in the velocity of the box. So the only explanation left is a change in the mass of the box from M1 to M2, resulting in a change in its kinetic energy. Now let's try to piece together all this information. So we have E equal to E minus V squared by 2C squared times E plus a loss of kinetic energy, which would be Ke1 minus Ke2. So the E's cancel out and we have 0 equal to negative V squared by 2C squared times e plus factoring out the one half and the v squared terms what we're left with is m1 minus m2 that is the initial mass of the box minus the final mass or the mass of the box lost as a result of the burst of radiation that i'm going to call uppercase m so on rearranging we have v squared times e divided by 2c squared equal to v squared m divided by 2 so the 2's cancel out, and so do the v squared terms, and we have e by c squared equal to m, just the way Einstein wrote in his famous paper, or e equals mc squared. 